I know a lot of people struggle with attention span, but I promise you, if you're one of the few people to actually stick around and watch this video and invest the next 10 minutes of your life to actually applying the information that I'm about to tell you, these five things that I have to this date within my trading plan will completely change the way you trade and the way you view the markets for the longer term. Promise you, if I'd have done this five, six years ago, I'd be in a completely different space now. So please listen to what I'm about to tell you as a friend, because this is going to change the game for you. So let's get into it. First things first, we're going to start off with some clear data released by my Forex funds over the past few months, which is February stats. So let's take a look at this. So the pass rate for phase one across all the valuation was 19.05%, so relatively low. The pass rate for phase two was 42.18, so obviously a little bit higher. But the key thing is with this is that there's still a relatively low percentage of people actually passing these accounts, let alone actually when you get the account, let's say you get the live funding to then between then and then actually receiving the first payout and then so so on and so forth. So what we wanna really do is focus on this and actually increase that and help you to put things in place so that you can you know, get funding if that's your if that's your goal and ideally just take it forward from there because the truth is funding should not be the main goal. It should just be a stepping stone. So if we can get you to think in the correct way and put the correct systems in place, that's gonna completely change the way you trade and your perspective with the markets. So I was talking about five rules to put in place, right? If, so if you really take this into consideration, this will completely change the game for you. So let's break it down now, and this will allow you to scale longer term. Right, so starts off very short and simple. So this is a risk system, right? So a risk system is put in place to obtain peak performance due to the strict risk rule-based system around protecting capital, i.e. if a few losses are taken in a row, <clears throat> the necessary action will be taken to protect both mental and physical capital. Here are the rules. So for me personally, I've got one entry model. I trade two sessions, London Open, New York Open, and I'll trade three pairs. So I've got Euro Dollar, Pound Yen, Dollar Swiss. Risk exposure is 1% on all trades, right? All trades, I don't faff around with different risk based on different opportunities. The reason for that, let me quickly dive into that, is because let's say you you grade setups. Let's say you say, right, this setup's high prob. This setup is valid. For this valid setup, I'm gonna uh, reduce the risk to 0.5. And then for a high prob trade, I'm gonna keep the risk at fixed 1%. The problem with that model is, let's say the high prob setup does not play out. Therefore, you then take a loss. So you're down minus 1%. If you then take a win on the valid trade, because remember, we're play, play, playing probabilities. Yes, you may quote something as less probable, but overall, the reality of trading is you do not know your sequence of wins to losses, right? That valid trade could then be a win. You could bank 3% in the markets, but because you've only risked 0.5 instead of the full 1%, so you're up overall net at 0.5% because you've taken one minus, minus one loss, plus uh, a 3R trade, which is plus 1.5, netting plus 0.5. So from one win, one loss, you're not really like getting anywhere. So keeping your risk fixed at 1% is, is such a big thing. I know people switch around the risk, but I just don't agree with that at all because you can never play the probabilities correctly. Three pairs maximum. So once again, like I said before, but here's where the key details come in place. I have a rule in place for max daily loss, right? I see a lot of traders and I've been there in the past where you start chasing a trade. You, let's say dollar Swiss currently, price is in an area of value. We've got FOMC in literally three hours time, so I'm not entertaining an entry. I'm waiting for the bloodbath to take place before even considering anything. However, let's take this as a typical example. Let's say you're looking for shorts here and you take one loss, you take two loss. You really believe that trade is going and you just, ultimately just get into that cycle of chasing the trade. It can be done very easily. So a, a system to put in place is a max daily loss. Let's say that you're also looking at two other pairs as well. You can quite easily fall into a cycle where if you're not careful and you're not in control of yourself, where you take one, two, three, four losses in a day and it can ruin you so badly and you end up digging yourself a hole that's very difficult to come out of. So if you've got a rule in place where you take two losses in a single day or one loss in a single day to protect your mental and physical capital, the max you can do damage to yourself is minus 2%. So yeah, it's obviously uh, 
it's one M. It's, it's, it's a pill to swallow, essentially. But you're not going to hurt yourself too badly from two losses. So it's a really simple rule to, play, to put in place, but most people don't, and it hurts them so, so badly. So really think about putting this in place. This has protected me so many times that you wouldn't even believe. And essentially, I don't need this rule in place now because my self-control is ultimately, you know, just overcome that rule. This rule is subconscious now. But in the past, I needed this to keep me in check. So something to, to really pay attention to. Along the similar wavelength is multiple entries on one single trade idea or movement. So like I said, with the dollar Swiss trade, if I was looking to enter this and I took one trade and it was a loss, right? Okay, same narrative. Let's take another trade. Once again, break even or a loss, you get into a habit once again. Very similar thing with the max daily loss of if you're not careful, you can take two, three, four losses in a row in a single trading day. And once again, you're digging yourself a hole. So instead of doing that, put your rule, a rule based system in place of, right, give yourself one attempt or two attempts, or let's say three attempts at a single trade idea. If that trade idea does not play out, don't tra chase the trade, right? We're playing probabilities to have a feeling that price is gonna go in your direction is completely backwards. It's not how you should be viewing the markets, right? So we wanna take, right, if you take a trade, it fits the plan, it fits the rules, boom, put the entry on. If you then take a loss and the same entry shapes up again, it's to the plan, right, cool, take the trade again. If it starts happening over and over again, you get to the cycle of chasing the trade. So at some point, there's gotta be a line in the sand. You've gotta say, right, you know, I've taken two losses on this trade now, I'm just gonna leave it, I'm happy to move on. You can get into that cycle of over-investing your emotions into the trade itself, over-investing your thinking into it to think, right, this is gonna start playing out soon and you can dig yourself a hole. So put a system in place, that is a big, big thing. Next, we have arguably the most important rule. If you put this in place, you are preventing yourself so much potential damage that can occur. And you know, we know the stats of people blowing their accounts and people messing up their trading. If even just a simple rule like this and put in place, as long as it's thought out properly, can save you more times than not. And it's a shame that just most people don't actually think about things logically. So let's talk about this. Drawdown periods. In my situation, if I take five losing trades in a row, judging by my stats in past performance in live data, backtesting data as well, I shouldn't be taking five losses in a row. Judging by my entries and the, the higher time frame narrative that I'm building, I at least should get a rejection from the, the, the price that I'm entering at to at least remove or reduce risk. If I'm then taking a full loss or let's say reduced loss five times in a row, that's a red flag in my eyes to say, right, double check yourself, make sure you're, you're doing everything correctly, make sure you stick into the plan, make sure you stick into the rules, and make sure you're not kind of jumping the gun essentially to, to get involved in trades because there's a very fine line between knowing your data and letting your edge play out, but then also recognizing very early on of potential tilt behavioral patterns because it's very easy if you take five losses in a row or let's say after a period of time to go on tilt and most people would not recognize the signs of tilt, right? I've been through it multiple times in the past. I know how to recognize it effectively now. I've got systems in place and I have for years now. But the truth is most people get into a tilt cycle and they have no idea and everything becomes a blur and you only really recognize it in hindsight. So let's say you take five losses in a row. You end up getting into this blurred, it's almost like brain fog. I'm not sure if you've had it before. Most people will have of you feel like everything's just essentially just speeding up. Like you can, you could literally take 10 losses in the space of two weeks, look back and be like, like how have I managed to take 10 losses in two weeks? Like that's the reality of tilt. So it can damage traders and it's, it's, it can do a lot of harm if you're not careful. So a lot of people would say, right, if you've taken five losses in a row, well, you know, the next trade could be a winning trade. However, for me personally, the priority is protecting both mental and physical capital. So if I've taken five losses in a row, I'm happy to then reduce risk by half. So going from 1% in risk down to 0.5 to protect myself. I understand that it's gonna take probably twice as long to get out that hole essentially on half risk because what would have been 3% trade is now a 1.5% trade, right? However, I'm playing the long game. I'm not in a rush. I'm not trying to get out of that drawdown period 
quickly to try and make the money back essentially and be all emotional about it i'm playing the long game and the thing is about this cycle a bonus to really consider is if you manage to go through that cycle of right you're down let's say for a quotation you're down minus five percent you've then half the risk right it takes you a good 10 percent to then get back to break even if you can do that and if you can do that multiple times you build this undeniable confidence in yourself that nothing can hurt you in the markets because if that ever happens in the future and you've done it a few times before you have a system in place you have the confidence that you've done it three four five six times before in the past therefore there's no real fear anymore does that make sense hopefully that's making sense because for me it was a big shift in perspective to realize only me can hurt me only i can hurt myself in the markets but if i control myself if i manage myself well if i put these systems in place that most people would not do or even think about yet it's so simple this can completely change your trading because the reality is i don't want to go into too much of a tangent here but we come into trading and we think things are simple then over time we overcomplicate things we overthink everything and we put so many things in our past to, to sabotage ourselves. But then at some point, if you stick around long enough and you persist long enough, you eventually come full circle to realize, wow, trading is actually very simple. It's not easy. It's probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but it's simple. There's a very key difference there. So it's really important to realize that. Last but certainly not least, because I've had this question a lot in Envision Markets as well, and I've talked about this quite a few times before with the MLC guys. In a situation, because I trade euro dollar and dollar swiss understanding that these are highly correlated pairs so if i'm looking for a short on euro dollar there's a good likelihood that i'm looking for a long on dollar swiss but in a situation it rarely happens but in a situation where both euro dollar and dollar swiss align at the same time meaning that entries are forming on two pairs how do i judge that from a risk perspective and how should you judge that from a risk perspective you've got to ask yourself are you happy with 2% risk open at one time? Now for me, if that was on euro dollar and pound yen because they're not correlated, I'm fine with that because they don't conflict with each other. I could take a short on pound yen and I could take a short on euro dollar and they both could play out. But on euro dollar and dollar Swiss because they're highly inverse correlated, there's a good chance that if euro dollar plays out, dollar Swiss will play out. If euro dollar doesn't play out, dollar Swiss won't play out. So therefore I'm essentially risking 2% on the single trade idea. Right, so how I judge that and what I put here as well is in that situation, the first pair that aligns, I will then take it. If I can then remove the risk off the table and then take the second pair, I will. So let's say I'm in Euro Dollar, I've removed the risk, I can then validate an entry on Dollar Swiss because there's no risk on the table at that point. I'm just back to 1% risk. However, if I can't do that, I'm not taking the trade. I'm not happy personally trading in a way where on seven figures in the future i've got two percent open on highly correlated pairs it's just it doesn't make sense it doesn't make logical sense you may think think so trading a thousand pound account but as you start to scale what you'll realize is that some of the ways you've been viewing the market some of the ways you've been viewing systems just changes completely so it's something to really think about and uh these are things that i've put a lot of thought into and tested out a lot but these are systems that I stick by and are fundamentals within my trading. And like I said at the start of the video, if you apply this and actually dig into this, this will completely change the way you view the markets, your trading, success over the longer term. This will act as a buffer so that if you do go in drawdown periods, you've got a buffer in place, much the same as like a bank account. Let's say you have 10 grand in a spare bank account you're not then worrying too much if something happens you know you've got that money there right it's the same thing in the markets where if you have that drawdown period you've got a buffer there it's it's fine you've got system in place to protect yourself it's just that mental capital protecting mental capital so so important right so like i said at the start of the video really take note to what i mentioned in that really key and if you've been in the markets for a while you know how key that information that i've just given out is please don't just take it in one ear and out the other because it's not going to benefit you in any way and I feel like most people do that. So really take into account what I said today. Go ahead, go and apply it, go and test certain things that I've said for yourself and then go from there.
So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll speak to you soon.